so Zarathustra stared at the sky for long periods of time and ended up finding wisdom in the light and referred to it as the incorporeal being. Basically the first god was the wisdom that he got from looking at the starlight. All that information pouring into him from the cosmos. And then he went on to talk about the, the power of choice and explained that people had the choice of who their leader was, how they judged things, and how they ruled their own life. And they chose each of those three things. And I think that was the beginning of his first hymn uh, in the holy book that preceded. I'm surprised Zarathustra doesn't get more attention as much as Mohammed and Jesus and Moses. For it was he that was the co-creator of all we know. But weren't they all? Weren't they all? <sighs> there's just like, it's very difficult to translate these old texts because there's like nothing to relate it to except what Persians translated it into, which was, uh, you know, they changed it. But I think that's pretty much the essence of what Zarathustra was, or Zoroaster, uh, which means, uh, that's the Greek term for, Undiluted star, Zoroaster. Well, that came from the Greeks referring to Zarathustra as the undiluted star, which is his light wisdom. And basically, he worshipped the stars, and his followers were called the Magos, the Magos, or the Magi, the plural term, but the Magos were the followers of Zarathustra, the sky worshippers. Well, they, the, they worshipped light, really, the light. And there was the sun, but it was so bright, you know, you can see those stars in the distance and probably get a lot more information, a different kind of information. Speaking of information, it's 4.31 in the morning, and I'm wearing a brown shirt. Redundant? Not if you're colorblind. I'll see you later.